right, so now that we have learned how to find the um, powers and roots of a complex number, I think it is time to introduce a few more techniques that we can use to evaluate the complex numbers of more complicated expressions. So let's say we want to find, evaluate the complex number natural log of ln 1 plus i. Now there are different ways that you can do this. You can actually expand this using a Taylor series, but the method I'm going to show you today is just basic algebraic manipulation that we can do with this. So we want to know what this number is in terms of a complex number. So it's going to have a real part and an imaginary part, you can imagine, because it's evaluating, it's a function of a complex number. So first things first, how can we reduce this expression? Well, we notice that there's natural log in front of it. So naturally you would think, well, if we can somehow put some exponential function here, we can actually just cancel it out with this and that would simplify things for us. And we know that we can express this in polar form by writing the magnitude, which is going to be 1 squared plus 1 squared, that's square root of 2. And we know we have seen this complex now in previous videos, so we know that the angle is going to be pi on 4. So this is the same as writing ln of square root of 2 e to the power of i pi on 4, pi on 4. And we know by the properties of logarithms that when we have two functions multiplying each other or two values multiplying each other we just separate them like this so we're going to have ln of square root of 2 plus i pi on 4 ln uh, of e which is just 1 because this is to the base of e so that's just going to be 1 and this is going to be our complex number that's the real part that's the imaginary part that's the exact form we could write an approximate value for this, so this is going to be around 0 0.3466 plus 0 0.7854i. So that's going to be the value of this number. That's a really interesting thing that we can do with it. And this applies to a lot of different things. So let's say, for example, we're interested in finding the number i to the power of i. And, and you might be thinking, well, how can you possibly raise a complex number to the power of i? I mean, that doesn't really make any sense by mathematical uh, convention. So how can you raise that? Well, let's consider the base for a second. So let's have set equals to i, such that if we plot this on the organ diagram, so that's real, that's imaginary, this is just going to be one unit in the imaginary axis. So that means that the magnitude of this complex number is just going to be square root of 1 square, which is 1. And then the angle is going to be just pi on 2. It's just, uh, it's perpendicular to real axis, so that's going to be pi on 2. Alright, so we can write now equals to the following, so that's going to be 1 times e to the power of, um, what was I going to say? Yeah, pi, i pi on 2 to the power of i. And now if we put, if we multiply that, i times i is i squared, i squared is minus 1 as we know. So this is going to be e to the power of minus pi on 2. And if you notice something about this, this is a real number, so that's a really interesting thing. If you raise the imaginary unit to itself, it gives you a real number, which is a very unexpected result. And if we approximate this, this will give us some somewhere around 0 0.20788. So that would be the value of this number, which is kind of crazy when you look at it. It's like, oh, how can you find, how can you possibly find that value? Well, here it is. That's what it is. So that's a really interesting trick. Now, this trick that I just showed you, it only works for expressions like this. So let's say we have something else. Let's say we have 3 to the power of 5. So now we have a real number here. Can we use the same technique? Well, we know that the magnitude is going to be 3. And what is the angle going to be? Well, if we have a 3 lying here, that's just the real part, it's just the angle is going to be 0. So here we have a problem. We have gone back to the same expression as before. So this is not very useful. So no, we cannot use that same technique. It only works for this one. So what else can we do? Well, let's call set equals to 3i. Now let's say we take the natural log of both sides. So that's going to be ln set is going to be equal to i ln 3. All right, so what do we do next? Well, let's take exponentials of both sides, but this time we're just going to leave it as it is. So z is going to be equal to e to the power of i natural log of 3. Oh, we can use the other identity, can't we? We can use cosine of ln 3 
plus i sine of l on 3 and that's a that's a really nice nice trick that you can apply that you might may not have known about so if you evaluate this you can approximate it as the following so that's going to be 0 0.45483 plus 0 0.8906i so there you have it you have basically evaluated this complex number and now you have another complex number that is the value of that simply by doing this simple manipulation and this is the more general technique for solving complex numbers raised to the power of i um, let's say for example so i'm just going to erase this at the top so we can have more space this one is going to require a little bit more working out but hopefully you will get the idea so let's say we're interested in evaluating the following number 2 plus 4i to the power of 3i now this one is a little bit more complicated but we're going to use the same technique that we used before let's call this set such that we take the natural log of both sides so that's going to be 3i natural log of 2 plus 4i now we're going to have to use the first technique because remember to evaluate this to expand this out we need to find out what this is in terms of its real part and its complex part so let's have ln 2 plus 4i now let's call this another complex number so the magnitude of this complex number is going to be what it's going to be 2 squared plus 4 squared so that's 4 plus 16 that's square root of 20 and the angle is going to be, well, it's 4 on 2, so it's going to be tan inverse of 2. And that's going to be the exact form. I will simplify it a little bit later on so that we can have the exact expression for now. So that means that this is going to be equal to ln of root 20 plus i tan inverse of 2 because remember this is the same expansion we did this, the first time in the polar form of this complex now we're going to have square root of 20 times e to the power of i tan inverse of 2 and then separating using uh, properties of logarithms we get to the following number so now we have the real part and the, con and the imaginary part separated so if we go back to this one ln set is going to be 3i times ln square root of 20 plus what is this going to be i times i is i squared which is minus one so that's going to be minus and this is going to be three tan inverse of two so now we have the real part and the imaginary part here so now what we can do is we can take natural log of sorry we can take exponential of both sides so that we end up with the f uh, following expression three i ln square root of 20 minus 3 10 minus 1 inverse and this is the same as writing e to the minus 3 10 minus 1 2 e 3 so I'm gonna put the 3 on the front so I times 3 ln 20 and you notice this is a real number and this is going to be a complex number because now we have the polar form of a complex number and if we want to get to the actual value if we want to express this in Cartesian form what we're going to do is we're going to have this um, constant 3 tan this real number at the front and this is going to be an application of the Euler identity so this is going to be the same as saying cosine of 3 ln square root of 20 so this this looks like a, a bit of a complex expression but you'll notice that it's actually not so complex because this is all gonna turn out to be quite nice in the end so there you have it that's that's the um value of this complex number that we started with which which was um uh, 2 plus 4i to the power of 3i this is what it is evaluated when we do that and that's a really interesting thing because this technique allows you to evaluate any number that is either um, within a logarithm any complex number of a logarithm or 
any complex number raised to the power of another complex number. So that's a really, really interesting thing. Now, what do we do with this? Well, we can approximate this and that will give us the value minus 0 0.007836 minus 0 0.03524i. So that's going to be approximately what this is. And just yeah, that's basically just to show you some of the techniques you can apply with complex numbers by using the fact that you can represent them as polar uh, in polar form using exponentials. Now, of course, this technique won't work always. So let's say we have some other function acting on the complex number like sine of on one plus i. What's that going to be like? Well, we cannot really invert this because transforming this to polar form would, won't do anything. So to do this, we actually need to define the sine function in terms of a complex number and that's something that we're going to do in uh, a few videos later on where we introduce functions of a complex variable but for now if you have any expression that is like this or any expression that is like this where do, uh, omega is another complex number then you know how to evaluate this using this method and in the next video we're going to move on from this to plotting complex regions on the organ diagram. So, so far we have been doing this. We have been plotting individual points or complex numbers on the uh, organ diagram. But in the next video, we're going to learn how to plot regions like this on the organ diagram. And that's going to be very useful and very important for us to know um, when we start talking about integration of a function of a complex variable. So that's what we will be doing in the next video.